yeah, hello. Welcome, Andreas, to our Yormi interview series. We are really, really happy that you are joining us today. Yes, thank you very much for your invitation. It is a pleasure and an honor for me to contribute to your interview series. Mm -hmm. So we are looking also forward and also the audience to the insights you will share with us during this video, this interview video. Um, but I want to start with the um, research we did um, about your career pathway. So from, yeah, we will start from the last 22 years and what happened there and how you came to the current position you are now. So um, we noticed that your CV is quite vivid. You started in year 2000, your PhD in mathematics education at the university in Braunschweig, Germany. And successfully, you completed in 2004, so that, as we can see in your CV, you obviously received the position as a postdoc directly afterwards at the same institute. Could you just please sketch up briefly on which topic you did your PhD? Yes, it was a qualitative empirical study concerning uh, teachers' beliefs, referring to statistics and probability education. Oh, wow. And is that the pathway you are following still? And we will hear a bit more about okay. Yes, this is one of my main interests still. Oh, great. Yeah, so uh, because we can see here in the CV that you then worked for three years at the University of Münster as an assistant professor before you then took up your first position as a full professor in Freiburg in 2009. And after five years in 2014, you moved to Kassel, to the university where you are, yeah, you have been a full professor since then till now. And I think also you planning to stay there. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, that's good to say. <laughs> yes, never predict the future. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you are there since then. And um, in addition to the steep career path, um, which we will hear more about in a moment, I think, there are other remarkable positions you hold. I will just sketch up a bit from some of these, um, because in 2017, until 2021, you were the head of the German Society for Mathematics Education. And since 2016, you are the acting head of the Center for Higher Mathematics Education. Can you perhaps say a few more words about this position in the Center of Higher Math Education? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, the uh, KHDM, that is the abbreviation of the um, Competence Center for Higher Education Mathematics, uh, is um, a scientific project of three universities, that is uh, the University of Hanover and the University of Paderborn and the University of Kassel. And uh, when I moved to the University of Kassel, I be became a member of uh, this competence center. And after some years, I, yes, um, I was more engaged in, in this competence center. And now I'm uh, the acting head or director, so to say. <laughs> Okay, that's great. That's great also to, to hear that there is a collaboration between different universities, which is really uh, remarkable for this position, I think. And to complete the list, um, you are supporting the work in the ERMI board since 2017. So that's the reason, of course, why you are in this uh, your interview series also, because we want to get to know a bit more about the ERMI board members and their work which there's how, because you are supporting since then a lot of things happening in the early society. And, um, and the, on the top of that, you are a current member of the editorial board of not just one, but three journals, the International Journal for Research in Undergraduate Math Education, Frontiers in Psychology, that's also a journal where you are acting, but you just uh, mentioned that it's the assistance um, assistant edit editorial that's I think the correct expression for this and the journal for mathematics didactics in Germany that's also one where German and in English publications where we are acting as the editorial board so these are also huge responsibilities for the community and that's impressive this overview I think it's really impressive to see how many things you are uh, doing and engaging and I must say, I'm very happy that you accept our invitation and I hereby hand over to Dorota, 
who will guide you through um, the other interview questions we prepared. So I can sit back and listen and enjoy. Thank you. And only a small, small thing. I was the um, in the editorial board of the last um, journal, Journal for Mathematics Education, uh, only since 2021. So it was uh, connected to my work as a, as a head of the German Society for Mathematics Education. Oh, thank you for this remark. I think we can um, change that in our slides. So it's uh, completely correct. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dylan. And thank you, Andreas, for the good beginning of, and then so we get a bit of insights and um, and, and learn to, to know you, Andreas, for those who are listening. So yeah. we'll uh, go over to a very typical interview the path of asking questions and 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 uh, and answers to those questions, uh, and we will uh, we will begin with uh, with your uh, current current work as a mathematics education researcher, and slowly move move uh, further to the to the next steps. So I would like to begin with with a, a very. Um, with a question about your motivations. Uh, so what motivated you to become a mathematics education researcher? Please tell us a little about it. Yes, um, so a, a main motivation for me to do something, anything is to, to learn uh, something um, about the world, uh, so to say. And that was a situation uh, when I ended my study program in teacher education. Um, I was faced with um, a situation um, that learning was finished in, in some sense at the end of my uh, study program. And uh, I um, have a, a career um, as a teacher in, in school uh, for 30 or more uh, years. Um, that was my perspective um, then. And um, although of course, teachers also learn in their um, profession, for, that's for sure. But um, uh, teachers are only partly uh, learners. And the main job is not to learn, but to teach what they learned before. And um, I was a little bit afraid about this perspe perspective, or, although I, I uh, liked to, to teach in uh, school. And, in, in this situation, I um, said to myself, um, I do not want to stop uh, learning. And um, I had two, two possibilities, mathematics or mathematics education. So both uh, were uh, for me possible um, perspectives. And I decided to, to focus on mathematics education because um, I, I liked to work with uh, human beings so to say and um, this was this was my main main motivation to learn more about um, the process of teaching uh, mm -hmm. and learning mathematics mm -hmm. so would you like to te tell us in uh, what stage or what um, part of the school how old, old were the people you were teaching um, I, my um, main um, um, focus was on um, teaching in upper secondary school, but uh, in Germany you have schools, um, the so-called gymnasium uh, is uh, from grade 5 to grade 13, and grade 13 is the end of the school, so you uh, make your Abitur, Matura or final mm -hmm. exam and uh, then you get the um, permission to go to university. Mm -hmm. So there's somewhere in the age between 12 to 18. Yeah. That yeah. that is the 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 older pupils at such to say before. Yeah. At the end uh, of the yes, mm -hmm. every grade after primary school uh, is integrated in, in the school form and um, in the school form. Yes. Yeah. I, I think it's always very interesting to to hear how how, how old actually the pupils are because we in, in we are having so huge variety of how yeah. the school systems are built and usually it's very 
good to know the the age about because then you can implement it to into your own country and and for right. myself this for example with with matura or gymnasium is a word i recognize from my mother tongue because that is where i'm in the from my my uh, country of birth that we also matura and so so it's very nice as how the language even if english for us both is a a, a foreign language we still can use words which are working to understand yeah. and i think yeah. this is very important so thank you very much so so it's kind of a motto of uh, that that to teach more about how to teach i think this is very I, I I take that with me from from your motivation, how you 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 frame in that motivation. So could you could you please uh, shortly describe your area of research? You told us at the beginning little about what your PhD was study was about, but it's still yeah. the same. What happened? How how does that develop? Yes, um, that is. Yes partly still the same uh, since my beginning at uh, uh, my university career. Um, the, the one is the teaching and learning of uh, statistics, uh, one um, main area. Um, I begin with that and I um, make also proposals for teaching statistics. I make not only research about it, but uh, make proposals how, how to teach on uh, this stuff in school or lay, later. And the other part is a, another main subject. So teachers beliefs is still uh, for me an interesting subject and an area of my 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 work and uh, research. Um, and I added partly uh, new directions. Um, the one uh, I um, mentioned also before that is uh, higher education mathematics. Uh, because I changed to Kassel and get the opportunity to work in this um, competence center of higher education mathematics. And uh, since 2014, this is also uh, a main subject. And um, I have some PhD students who work in, in this in this field. Mm -hmm. And for, um, for two parts, uh, namely uh, statistics education and uh, higher education mathematics, um, digital tools are a very, a very crucial topic or research about digital tools. So this is maybe a fourth um, main area in, in, in my work. So and, um, for, I think for all the four areas, um, this is, as, yes, so the process is to um, get a fund or uh, other way around, write something about uh, it, uh, write an application for, for funding, uh, get hopefully uh, um, funding, uh, get the next possibility to make research and, and so on and so on. And uh, I do it in these four areas. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I, I also uh, appreciate that that you share with us the, 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 the fact that your research area can also be uh, developed further by by changing the workplace and meeting a researcher with in the area like you said in the higher education to to add on on your own area but also uh, contribute to another one and i think that is very important insights to, to know that this this is a way of of developing your own area but also contribute to another one by working with with uh, as you said for in your case for in four areas and combine them or maybe in some some cases learn from from each of it even of, even if they are work can work together but they are still can be in, in in four different paths and i think this is very important to 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 actually learn about it that things are yeah Evolving so, and developing uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, by us doing the research yeah, and, I think, and working with others, of course. Yes. I think it's a little bit dependent from, from the possibilities in a, a specific working uh, place. Yes. And uh, the, um, yes, possibilities and uh, also um, their own focus on mathematics education. And if 
if both parts meet together, then uh, then you have a new research field, so to say. Yes, yeah. There is a few components that need to collaborate, yeah. and the possibility yeah. is a keyword, um, indeed. Uh, so, what do you enjoy the most about your work? Yeah, as I uh, told you before, um, uh, this is maybe also the, was the answer uh, to the um, to a previous question. Um, what was my motivation to um, become a researcher uh, mm -hmm. in mathematics education? Um, I I enjoy to learn more about um, how people think mathematically and how um, people learn uh, or teach um, mathematics and um, to be a little bit more precise for for me it is, it is a joy uh, or i enjoy i love to to plan uh, research for example i uh, in, enjoy to discuss uh, research or to discuss uh, specific designs or dis discuss different research approaches or um, discuss the meanings of constructs that we use in our uh, research. That is um, every time this is uh, the motivation for my work and that is the joy that I have uh, in, in my work to do, to think about uh, these things. Um, and uh, then it is a, um, I enjoy to make plans about applications for grants, for example. So, and to work with uh, different people together and dis discuss with them um, considerations about research or applications for grants and, and so on and uh, so on. And uh, then it is possible to learn uh, from other people how they think uh, about the uh, same objects uh, or the same research ideas that I uh, have and this is for me the most motivating um, things in uh, in my work and um, every time maybe not every day but um, from time to time I'm uh, look back and I'm uh, still very very happy that I had the opportunity to to um, do this career to have this this career i'm really free in doing things mm -hmm. uh, i'm free in um collaborate with these or that uh, people and i'm mostly free uh, to do my research in in the way that i like mm -hmm. yes. which 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 could also be so that the 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 posing those question of the question of how people think mathematically. This is a question you can be asking on and on and on and learn from it by yeah. planning for, for research study and looking on and figuring it out from a different, different, I said, different study design, different research approach, different, different way of with the collaborators you have to think about how people are thinking. Uh, Thank you very much because it, it it is a very valuable insight. Actually, what makes makes you with in within your career in math education go continuing in in doing research, writing grants application. I I am not very much into the German um, um, how many you you can write. 10 applications, but maybe just one get founded or 20, but you still continue it because part of doing it is the part you also enjoy. And I think this is very, very yeah. insightful to know. Yes, of course. Uh, you are not every time um, successful. It is the same when you uh, write a paper. So not every paper is accepted from every uh, uh, journal. So um, there are up and downs may, may be, but uh, I think uh, more ups. So um, the the joy still exists. But I have to say also a little bit um, uh, about teaching. Also teaching is, uh, I enjoy teaching at um, university level as I also enjoy teaching uh, in school but um, also in teaching I the thing that I um, most 
enjoy is when when I have new ideas for um for a seminar or a, a lecture and try to figure it out with uh, my colleagues and uh, try a new way uh, um, of teaching. So that is also fun for me. Mm. So so the the how 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 people think mathematically is following also into the regular te teaching at the university. One would could yes. say that. So it's, yeah, it's not the case that I I, I change my. Uh, lectures uh, every semester, uh, of course not, but um, from time to time there mm. are um, considerable changes. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. So um, we 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 you raised a lot many insights about motivation and enjoyment, but is there anything you enjoy less? Yes, of course. Um, um, maybe that is a thing that you have to do at uh, universities. That is administration. So I do not like um, admin administration of university management, um, teaching administration of students, administration of the administration, and 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 so on. That's um, connected to. Uh, sometimes long meetings um, where you discuss in, in detail, detail uh, some aspects of administration. It, I, I know that it is necessary, uh, but I do not like this. Mm. And I think that is fair to say that 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 might be a part you rather, it's, it's less enjoyable, but it is necessary. Yes, of course. But that is, that is how how it it is it is included in the work as mathematics education researcher as being a teacher position full professor at the university. There are other parts which are not not always must be something we enjoy. Thank you that for for this and that uh, current job or what we are doing is bringing us to the second part of the interview, which is about base it on your experiences as the researcher in mathematics education. So I will we, be, we begin with the first question in regards to uh, which adv uh, advices was or would have been hopeful for you at the beginning of your career. So now you have the, as Dylan introduced this, over 20 years experience as, as a researcher. And so what, what which advice was or would have been hopeful for you at the beginning of your career? Yeah, um, I know that you have another question about what I what I um, propose to my PhD students or young yes. researchers. Can can we can we change both questions yes. so it is better for me or more mm -hmm. appropriate to answer? Yes. Um, so so the 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 second question was is about the advances and advices or suggestions you yeah. might give. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, for me, there are, are some um, aspects. Um, um, I, I say, for, for example, to, to my uh, PhD students, uh, that's, uh, that they should focus um, on aspects of teaching and learning mathematics uh, for which they are really really interested um i think in in particular the the work on the a dissertation when when you are a young uh, researcher um is is like is like a wave uh, including um ups and downs um and that is that is a uh, situation for years for some years uh, where you are working uh, specifically on uh, on your your project uh, as a dissertation, and if you are not really interested uh, in in uh, the subject um, of a dissertation or um, yes uh, of a PhD uh, study, it is uh, it could be an obstacle uh, later on. And um, if you are really interested, this is a really good basis for for being successful in this and um maybe uh, a phd student has um an interest that is not the mainstream at the moment um 
that doesn't matter for me. Um, it, it, became, uh, it is possible that it will become uh, um, a mainstream um, topic in, in our community. And if not, uh, it is, uh, yes, it is um, not mainstream. That is also okay. Um, we have uh, a lot of research that is not in, in the mainstream of our community and is um, also, uh, of course, also uh, valuable. That is one advice. Um, this is partly different if we have a funded funded project. Uh, then, then uh, the, the subject is given by by the funds um, or funding organization. And uh, in this case, uh, my advice for for PhD students or or young researchers is that they ha have to ask themselves if the the topic that is given is really interesting uh, for them. And I I think interest and intrinsic motivation so to say is um very important for being uh, successful in in the phd study and the next advice is after uh, afterwards if you have your uh, theme or subject uh, then is it is good to getting to know other researchers um to meet them at conferences nationally or internationally and not all and internationally um and and talk to them that is uh for me very important um because um it is it is possible to learn something about uh, other ways of doing uh, research maybe other ways of doing uh, research in a similar or, or also a very similar uh, area um, compared to to the own uh, research it is um, possible to learn more about uh, questioning uh, things. Uh, it is um, some some very crucial uh, things for for young researchers to getting to know other persons, not only the young other young researchers, but all, also experienced uh, researchers. And uh, of course, it is um, mandatory for for me to to uh, getting to know other young researchers, building networks uh, with them, talk about problems or uh, ways um, of uh, doing doing research. So uh, also these networks are uh, very important in my uh, opinion. So it is an advice to join um, conferences or research groups nationally and uh, internationally and yeah in in this regard uh, the work you you do in uh, for for yomi is very important for the com community we have also young researchers in a group in our german society that is um, yes very big you know it we have uh, hundreds of young researchers in our community and uh, there's a small group uh, of these young researchers who also organize um, networking uh, with these uh, young researchers and that is a very very important work it is great that uh, people like you are um, feeling responsible for for yeah. these questions i think the the your advice about uh, to getting no other researchers who are also doing in the same stage of the career doing writing a phd doing a phd study and meet and 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 this and discuss and and belong to a community i i think this is a very valuable insight i i would I would say that it must be it must be almost a, oh, very challenging to try to do a dissertation without having, uh, as you said, this with network and getting to know others and learn about other ways of doing similar research and learn from it. Um, and 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 as my understanding is for the German community, it is a very very huge community uh, nationally. Uh, and 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 and, but but it also requires you to to actually get to know people. It's not coming to you. It it yeah. you have to be active in it. Uh, it doesn't knock on the door and say hello. I am here. Um, it, it it you need to have the drive and the as your first advice was about be really interested in the topic. That is the drive which can makes you 
as a young researcher to go in and and get to know people. So this my understanding from your advice is, is it is built up. It is from get, being really interested individually to actually belonging to a community and that that is needed. And thank you because I think this is very important advice. Um, yeah. Even for the German community, which nationally is so big, you could actually, as you said, hundreds of young researchers they could actually just be in, within their own community, but going getting out is also an important part. Yes, uh, of course. It's uh, um, going going outside from from a group um, is is important. So a group. Like the group at my university, we we discuss a lot of uh, things. But um, hear, hearing or uh, getting to know other uh, ideas, opinions, is, um, languages, um, cultures, or and so on is mm -hmm. very important for, uh, so to say, um, a growth and intellectual growth, uh, so, so so to say. And um, I think we have so much opportunities in our uh, community for for us and also for young researchers. So, so a general advice is to to be aware of these options and possibilities. So, so with the Latin uh, word "carpe diem," um, try to use the possibilities and and also to have fun uh, um, in in some sense with other people from other countries that is very um, that is a benefit of our work a big benefit yes so i think that will bring us to um a next part because when you do network getting to know other people you also get to know the work so yeah. the, the next part of of uh, of uh, the the next question is about um, your um, so what would be your advices or name or three articles or maybe books which you think that every researcher in math education should have read um, and tell us one or two sentences about it. Yes, it was um, uh, because I saw your questions before. That was uh, the question um, I um, I struggled uh, with this question because it is difficult to say uh, uh, everyone have to read uh, three papers or three uh, books. Um, this is very, very depending from from the situation and the interest. Um, I uh, all, only a small uh, anecdote. Um, I, when a colleague of mine um, retired, he made a party and a um, um, small talk, um, yes, uh, on, on this party on uh, about his research and his interests. And he um, also mentioned three books uh, from which he was uh, very impacted. Um, and I know only one title, but never uh, read this one title. The other two titles I never heard before. And uh, I asked myself, these are the three most important books and I, I know uh, none of uh, them that is uh, difficult. So um, in this direction, uh, I want to answer it slightly uh, in a slightly different uh, sense. Mm -hmm. I can say, uh, I, I talked about my research interests, my res main research interests, and I can say which works. I every time uh, make a reference to or um, con uh, think about them again, these, these papers again, when I think about uh, the topics. Um, so um when when i when i uh think about statistics and statistics education one paper came every time in my mind and that is uh, from two uh, one statistician in new zealand and uh, a statistics educator in new zealand that is chris white and maxine funko they wrote 1999 the paper Statistical Thinking in Empirical Inquiry that was published in um, not a mathematics education journal that is very well known, but in the journal International Statistical Review. Mm -hmm. And this paper is like the title is about 
uh, statistical thinking. Uh, there are other, other aspects in, in this paper, but uh, the construct of statistical thinking is very important for, for my work. There are five aspects of statistical thinking. And um, when I uh, think about teaching statistics, I every time try to arrange my teaching around these uh, aspects. And also in research is uh, for um, partly uh, of interest because also research um, can be structured um, with these five aspects. That is the, the first one. Mm -hmm. The second one is in uh, my other research interest when I um, think about teachers' beliefs um, and write something about teachers' beliefs. I mostly make a reference to the work of uh, Hanula. That is a paper um, named Exploring New Dimensions of Mathematics related effect. It was um, emotion, uh, no, sorry, embodied and social theories. Um, this was a paper in research and mathematics, um, research and mathematics education, yes. And uh, this was, so to say, um, a synthesis of research made in CERMI conferences. In, uh, in the related group and also PME conferences. This is my understanding uh, um, of this um, paper. And this is, uh, for me, a very helpful synthesis that I can use for um, for locating my research in the huge body uh, mm -hmm. of, of research. And the third is the interest of higher education mathematics. Um, when I think about this subject or research in this um, area, I um, mostly refer to the work of Ghislaine Guidé. She's very well known in the CERMI community. But she's also on the board. Uh, she um, published the paper investigating the secondary tertiary transition. And that is a paper in educational studies and, and uh, mathematics where she really exemplarily describe possible um, problems in the transition from school mathematics to university mathematics. And that is also uh, important for me in doing research in this field and also for thinking about teaching uh, in this field. Mm. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, indeed, um... The, the, this this question is is as you said uh, uh, can be very personal because one might might think okay should everybody know or should all of us know exactly this as you said that that anecdote from your colleague uh, party but you also share share with us this an example of like you said the paper where it was a synthesis directly linked to the field of your of 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 your research which which could mean when, when, for example, I might think about my field of early childhood research, uh, then I would think, okay, which, what synthesis, uh, uh, um, article that was a synthesis of the, what is happening in the field, which actually helped me to get to grasping because it's a field is large. And I think this is actually a, also a kind of advance you are sharing with us that there, there might be or there is a paper, two or three, or a books which actually are very good synthesis, which are bringing up so many important aspects in the field we are uh, in to help us to navigate um, yeah. in it, and then of course go further. But but to navigate in a way uh, that 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 makes us uh, to to uh, I read that because I reread it, or as I said, you. You you still using it in a different in your teaching or in in preparing to 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 applications, but in, in the, the the one you mentioned mentioned at the beginning with the five aspects of statistics, which is following you, yeah, uh, in 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 uh, uh, is part of your experience as a researcher. So uh, even it might not be the same kind of article or book for all of us, but I think when someone begin to think about it. There are similarities in what are those kinds of articles or books uh, that that follows with us in a sense, like it, like you said, it follows with you um, uh, further. So, 
so thank you for it. Um, so there is a, a next um, part or next question about um, the future of what, what, in your opinion, of course, we have, we are all in a variety of, of ideas, but in your opinion, in in your opinions, opinion, sorry, uh, what are the key topics or challenges for the future research in mathematics and in education, but perhaps especially in mathematics education? I know we cannot move into the future, but you might have an opinion about it. Um, what, what do we need to know, learn about? Yes, that was my first impression. You said it before, it is uh, very difficult to predict the future. Um, how, however, um, I assume I assume that uh, new techni technological development uh, will impact our practices and also our research, um, referring to teaching and learning mathematics a lot. Uh, so um, we know that in, in uh, the last 10 years and also last 20 years, uh, new technological um, development, yes, influences um, our whole uh, community and maybe we have uh, another form of of computers uh, in in the next decades so um maybe a lot of things mm -hmm. change and I, I think i do not know what 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 will be uh, the development in this field but i assume that we have a strong impact from this direction and for for me uh, an ongoing challenge, uh, you also raised uh, this uh, aspect before, an, an ongoing challenge is to, to learn more about, um, um, yes, details of teaching and, and learning uh, mathematics, about the process of teaching and learning uh, mathematics. In some sense, we are a very, very young scientific discipline. And uh, we know a little bit uh, from empirical studies but not not too much. Um, um, when when I look twenty, for example, twenty five years ago, empirical research was very very seldom. Mm -hmm. um, and nowadays we have a lot of empirical research, but we have much more themes, topics, areas um, in which we have um, only few um, uh, research and have a lot to do to to learn more about the. Mm -hmm process of teaching and learning so um and only an observation uh for of me is that maybe a trend goes to interdisciplinary research um of course we have interdisciplinary research um already but i think uh this this trend will uh, increase. It is an assumption of me. I see, for example, um, yes, the um, proposals for research programs or research grants um, that are more and more uh, going in, into the interdisciplinary um, area. And uh, in, in Germany, we have uh, study programs um, that are more and more interdisciplinary. We think about, uh, for example, sustainable development goals that are um, also only, um, it is only possible to understand them interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. And um, a last thing that I assume um, is that my my own subject will um, grow a lot, that is uh, um, statistics. So, um, of course, you can say uh, that is my subject because, uh, and, and now I express my wish, but I think there are there's some evidence that we uh, will focus more on learning statistics. So we have the data literacy construct that is interdisciplinary. We have a lot of people that uh, write or talk about uh, uh, so-called datafication of our uh, modern world. So everything is described by uh, data. We have a lot of data, more data than we are able to um, process. So um, I think this to, to learn about something about this will become 
more and more uh, important, not in the traditional statistical way, but uh, maybe in a new data science way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand, and I, 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 I am just thinking about how, how in the recent years the statistical statistical data have been used uh, in, 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 for example, in the media, and and it's coming. I, I just think yes, it is growing in that that there is also need of operationalization of the statistical data, but also to problematize what are we doing with it. Yes, of course. And there is the interdisciplinarity coming in. Uh, is is use how 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 things are used or how the the knowledge is used to 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 things and 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 uh, of course we cannot predict, but but we can make as you said. Is we are mathematics education is quite young discipline, yeah. so. Um, and and I also think when I listened to you when you you gave the first example about the te technology and the use of the te te technology tools in, then it it goes back to to what you really began with this your motivation for learning how people think mathematically. There is different kind of question, different might need to understand how people think mathematically differently in the future uh, in in in. In teaching and in learning and all that, yeah, so, that's, that's yeah. Possible, yes. So, so they are very interest, nice and interesting uh, links um, uh, in in uh, in uh, what you began with. I, I think is uh, very very fascinating in a way. So, um, let me see uh, now. I think we had one, yes, uh, one more question about, um, so uh, what is your biggest takeaway learning from the last uh, six months? Um, it could be work-related, but don't have to be. Yeah, um, so uh, work-related uh, for me is... Um, uh, is also referring to interdisciplinarity. So uh, uh, I started a project with colleagues from other disciplines, and um, for me, it is also a new, new, um, new fact or new phenomenon, new learning um, that uh, interdisciplinary research is uh, so fruitful uh, or um, give so much new perspectives on uh, on uh, subjects that i know know before but i now i uh, getting to know them in in another way um for example uh, i i said it uh, um more uh, more times in this interview that probability or statistics is uh, a subject of mine and um, in in one project that we plan uh, uh, at the moment um, we work together with a uh, philosoph and um, the philosophical perspective on probability is um, was completely new uh, for me and it's a new insight in a very well known uh, field and that is um, yes really really interesting and it comes from interdisciplinarity and it's a little bit forced because interdisciplinarity is um, Yes, it is a demand in, uh, in 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 some parts of our research uh, community. That is, um, for me, a takeaway from from the last month. And um, the other takeaways, yeah, may, may, maybe we know this all is um, it's more uh, um, pessimistic that it is possible uh, and that uh, our our community that is. Uh, connected in in uh, in various ways is able to disconnect and uh, make war in in uh, in a part of Europe. That is for me another takeaway that I never never um, predicted uh, before. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my thought was we are so connected; it is impossible to uh, to make war in 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 the, in the heart of Europe. But but it is possible. So possible. that is another takeaway. Mm -hmm. But that. 
the, this takeaway is also uh, something you you said a bit earlier on in this part of interview about your 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 advice to to postgraduate students. You follow it yourself. You you are networking. You are getting to know new people and develop your own thinking with it. So yeah. it's, it's it's a way that you 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 actually should never as a researcher stop on getting to know new people go outside your comfort zone or outside your discipline and open up to 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 for new different understanding not say this is the correct way this is this is the best uh, and and you 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 give us as an example of the biggest takeaways i i think this is a very very nice way of 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 showing how you're actually using the advices you are giving uh, yeah. to to young researchers to still use them and and see a benefit of it so thank you andreas for for this sharing yes so that will bring us to the last part now when we are all relaxed and uh, so it will be a little more about last part which is the, a little from your private corner uh where where we uh, this will be the, the last part of the interview so if i can so how do you spend your time outside of work yes i um this is maybe uh um, a very common uh, way to spend the time. Um, I um, are interested in in three things mostly. That is uh, uh, sports and music, and um, I really love to uh, eat uh, in um, not everything, but uh, in uh, how to say it in. So, so to say, in uh, in very good restaurants, eat and drink in very good restaurants. So that is a, um, a thing that I really love to do, and um, it is partly to, uh, the other things is or everything is um, partly um, an action of me. So uh, I, I did a lot of sports um, when I was young, and uh, I um, yes uh, am able to do sports some some days uh, in a week so i try to to make a two days a little bit sports so running uh, um, through through the um uh, wood or through a park and um but i'm interested in in looking or hearing or reading something about sports and music i make a little bit music so i play a little bit uh, piano mm -hmm. um, but uh much more often I uh, hear music. So I'm a fan of an uh, opera. So uh, I, I try to to see a lot of operas uh, in my hometown and uh, also other places. And um, the third is I try to cook sometimes. Sorry. I try to cook uh, something um, sometimes. Um, but uh, as I said before, I really love to uh, go in a good restaurant in, in, in my hometown and also other places. Uh, and I like to have good dinners and um, drink a good uh, wine, so to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I think I think it's, it's also very, very important to have a different interest. <laughs> and then so so maybe in Budapest during the next semi congress you, you might have time to go to the Budapest Opera House. Who yeah, knows? Maybe. maybe there will be someone else who is also interesting into to the opera and then and see and then uh, also enjoy a cultural life in in oh. in a country where we are coming to do a conference in research in math education. So there's uh, things that can be combined. It so is you are running. running. Do you like to run? Yes. Um, maybe that is uh, um, possible to do. Um, I um, played um, basketball, although I'm not too um, big. Uh, a lot in in, in my um, 
some years uh, ago and um but i'm not able to to play play this uh, nowadays and uh, but i'm able to to run a little bit and uh, this is um good to think about other things when when i'm i am running i think about not about mathematics education but <laughs> every other thing and look into the nature um and this is uh, good for for my uh for, for for the what is the what is the word for it for example for the back because i'm sitting more, most uh, yeah. time of the day and so it's not so good for the back and it's good for the back to to run a little bit and um this and also for for the brain it's yeah uh, it's yes, it's, in, to it's important to have some something else than than work to say. So, uh, one one uh, question which is little so a uh, question of surprise which we did not show with you uh, as a question of, uh, during which is little um, to to smooth it the interview out is so. When was the last time you did something for the first time? You can take something, example, from the private life, but can be also from work. You mentioned about that, that you do, began to, to to do research or inter, interdisciplinary research it could be something, but anything else. Was, uh, when was the time you did something for the first time? Um, if I um, answer this question from the perspective of my work, uh, I try to do things the first time, hopefully uh, uh, every month in 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 my work, uh, learn something uh, new, um, have new discussions, um, plan something new. For example, uh, collaborate with new um, persons. That uh, for for me, that is also uh, doing something um, the first. Um, time and um, in my private life, so um, I'm not prepared to this. Um, um, so maybe, so I'm, maybe I'm not when, sure if I get a uh, get a, a valuable answer. Yeah, to, to maybe no, but maybe in your um, restaurant visit when you like to go and enjoy some nice meal, is there something you? Ate for the first time, you thought, "Oh, I would never eat that." Or maybe you try something to do something. Yes, uh, of course. This is also um, when when I go to a restaurant, I try to to um, uh, learn uh, new uh, ways of um, uh, of preparing meals. So um, going to uh, a very very good Asian restaurant that was um, uh, a thing in the last six months uh, we we did um, and uh, this was a new um, so experience uh, to eat on this level uh, Asian food and but uh, I do it uh, also when when I travel to to conferences when we were in Japan there was a big um, Conference on statistics education. Uh, we, we try to eat every everything that is uh, common in, in in Japan. It was uh, sometimes um, really strange, <laughs> and, uh, sometimes uh, really uh, good. And we try it in every every conference. So it's also when we uh, when we have a German conference, I uh, go one one evening. I go with uh, all my PhD students. Uh, actual and previous uh, PhD students, we go to a restaurant and uh, I try to get a traditional food that is common for, for the region. Mm -hmm. And this is also uh, every time a new thing. I do not know uh, the uh, um, food styles, but it's interesting to to taste uh, it. My PhD students maybe hate this. Uh, they Maybe they say, oh no, I have to go with uh, my supervisor in a in a strange restaurant, but uh, I I like it uh, really much. So so are you are, are you the person who finds those interesting places and restaurants? Or yeah. You, yeah. So you are yeah. the one who do the research for it before. Yes. 
So plan, plan every time I my challenge to find a, a place yeah. um, that offers uh, this. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you. Um, so that will take us to the absolutely last question. Uh, as we prepare, you might have something additionally to share, but from our part, the last question would be, uh, about anything else you would like to share with the Yemi community um, in, in regards that you think that would be the good thing to share or I would like to share. Yes, um, I I, th I think I tried to share um, everything I know, so to say. Uh, and so I have only uh, four uh, imperatives or um, demands uh, that I think uh, this um good to think think about it every day or uh, every week so uh the one demand is uh or advice is be interested be interested in your uh, research research and stay interested in in your research see the possibilities uh, that you have in your uh, work the privilege that you have in your work so um I again quote the Latin uh, uh, wisdom, carpe diem. And the last is have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. I think that is a very good good way of, of, of closing the interview to to enjoy enjoy the the, the, the being a researcher in math education, be enjoy to, to, to be a part of community and work together. Uh, as you share with us. So once again, on behalf of myself uh, and Dylan and the whole Young Researchers community, we are, uh, would like to thank you for, for, for your time that you shared with you, uh, your insights, both about your current career, the, the, your research, but also the experiences you bring with you, what, what and where those experiences are leading you. And and also a little on the private corner about things you are also doing as 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 a, a, as a person as also as a, an editor in 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 uh, in journals as a supervisor you also are sometimes going out and eat or listen to music or enjoying opera and I think that is also part of a of a, a, an important insight as as a, a, to get to know. Uh, board members that they are doing actually also other things as as part of their everyday life as a full professor at the university Kassam. so once again andreas thank you very much thank you too it was a pleasure